Boom. I stopped right when it stopped. That was like perfect. Uh, oh. Are y'all ready for this? Y'all ready for this? Oh, we got to turn off the AC. <laughs> It will be off right, so soon. Today. We're so glad you're here. You guys are awesome. You ready to start? Officially start? Fire. What? Don't ever do what again? I'm just kidding. <laughs> I think that was great. Oh, like, I, I should do that. <laughs> like spirit fingers are good things to do at all times. <laughs> well, thank you for all the here. <laughs> Okay, you guys, welcome to Let's Make Art. We like to watercolor, and you like to watercolor, even if this is your first time. I'm telling you, you're gonna love it. It's so much fun. We have Allie here today. Yay! Yay! Thanks for joining us, Allie. And this is our project, Sliced Citrus. This is our first from our new box. First from our new September box that hopefully you guys have and are ready to go. There's a lot of you out there that have it. Yes, Thank you. a lot of you have it. You guys are so awesome. Um, and we're just using three colors tonight. We have uh, dandelion yellow and Tahoe blue and magenta. Just those three colors and we mix like so many other colors. It's really great. Uh, we are using two brushes today, a round six and a round two. The round two, I mean six is helpful when we do larger spaces or marks or shapes. Yes, please do this with me. Thank you very much. And then the round two is nice when we're doing smaller shapes and uh, detail lines and just smaller areas. Okay? Okay. Okay, great. Um, let's start with our oath. Ooh. Serious. Are you ready for the oath, Al? I do hereby. <laughs> I swear. I swear with every fiber of my being. <laughs> On the blood of my brother's <laughs> brother. Okay, it's not that intense because it's just painting. But everybody, raise your right hand yep. and repeat after me. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise to have fun. I promise, I promise to have, have fun. fun. Is that something you can promise? I feel like I it is. We just did. We just so. did. Gotcha. We're going to find out. <laughs> gotcha. It happened. And I promise not to compare my work with others. And I promise not, not to compare, compare my work, work with, with others. others. Thank you. Because comparison is the thief of joy. And I will not stand for that. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. I've never seen you this passionate. I am very passionate about <laughs> joy. <laughs> okay. Let's do our warm-ups. Before we get started, we just are gonna warm up on a couple techniques and get used to our paints and our colors. Down a bit. Oh yes. Oh yeah, I forgot about the overhead. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we good? Yep. Okay. Okay, so what we're going to practice here is I actually want to practice um, some leaf shapes. So um, to mix green because we don't have green on this palette you do have a green a bottle of green paint in the package we sent you with the subscription so if you want to pull that out and paint with that you are more than welcome to um, but if you don't have green it's always a good idea to know a little bit about color theory and to mix green is just mixing yellow and blue that's all it is so um, i put two piles of yellow on here and one is going to be my mixing pile that i'm going to pull from well, what colors what colors if they have ph martins in Oh, if you have PH Martin, then uh, use a daffodil yellow, use like a Norway or a turquoise blue, and for the magenta, you can use a cherry red or a moss rose um, within, within there. Good question, Jody. Great question, Jody. Thank you for that. And we'll tell you as we, I know that we kind of are transitioning, we'll, I will absolutely tell you what colors are similar in the Dr. PH Martin, so if you have the sets, don't stress. I'll, I'll tell you what colors you can use. So I'm gonna pull a little bit of the yellow and I'm gonna grab a little bit of the blue. And then just depending on how much um, color you pull, so if I pulled like a lot of yellow and just a little bit of blue, then I'm gonna have more like a lime green. And if I pull a lot of blue in there, I'm gonna have like, gosh, this would be like um, like an emerald almost, like a blue-green. Emerald is good. 
So um, this is a great color. And when we do our leaves, we adjust the colors. Um, we kind of mix them up. So just use, uh, just kind of mix until you're happy with the color. And um, to do leaves, I usually use my round six. And then what I like to do is, um, I'll, I'm gonna start at the very beginning for people who are just starting. I get my brush and I dip it in the water and I kind of hit it off the side. So it's just damp. And then I pick up some paint, brush. grab your damp brush pick up some paint and then I just like to do um, kind of like kind of like we're making the shape of an eyeball so it's going to be like a curved line that goes to a point and then the other side so I kind of do it uh, a side at a time and then I just fill it in yep and then this is where leaves are super fun because right from here I can drop in water just like that uh, if I were to do another leaf, you could even take some blue or another color and just drop it right in. I like to do it kind of at the tips and just get some color variation in there. But I noticed that some of you, like um, people were doing their leaves and they were, um, somebody made the comment that their leaves looked like slugs, <laughs> uh, which sometimes leaves do look like slugs, so it's okay. Um, yeah, <laughs> we want, so to avoid that, um, you wanna make sure that your leaves have a point at the top. And I know that it's kinda hard to get a point, it just takes practice, but you basically are just using the very tip of your brush to like kinda sharpen those ends. So don't feel like you have to make the leaf perfectly pointed the first um, go around because sometimes you like draw your leaf and it's just not as sharp, you can just kind of draw over that and sharpen that up. There's nothing wrong with that. The other thing you kind of want to look out for is you can have like a curve in your leaf, but you don't want it too um, curvy that it's like totally lost. Like this is pretty clear that that's a leaf. This one is maybe not necessarily as clear mm -hmm. just because of the, the curve of it. Um, which I know we did like our sunflower leaves were really curvy, but that's because we did it from the side. There are exceptions. There are, there are exceptions to everything I'm going to say. So, <laughs> but um, just kind of practice those shapes, play with those colors. Um, this is with obviously a little bit more yellow. So I have a lighter green here. And these warm ups are always a great way to kind of familiarize yourself with the, with the colors kind of test them out almost, so you're kind of making little swatches. Yeah. And then the next thing that we're going to do is we can still keep going in this leaf shape, but I want you to practice different values. So usually when you're painting, if you want a color to be lighter, you add white to it. But with watercolor, we don't need to add white to it because we have water, and we actually just let the white of the paper act as white paint almost. So if you want a color to be lighter, you just add water, which makes your paint more transparent. So I want you to practice doing three different values. So um, just get a little bit of paint on your brush and have it mostly be water. And I want you to do a leaf in that really light. See how that color is like barely there? I want you to get used to that because um, in all paintings, it's always good to have color variation, even in something as, um, as kind of more illustrative as uh, this citrus that we're doing. Great. And then I want you to grab a little bit more paint and do kind of a medium value. So it should be darker than the one, this initial one right here. It should be a little darker. And this is gonna be a lot darker. If, if it's too dark, like I don't think that's too dark. I, mm. I think yours is fine, but you could always lift color up too. Let's say I want to lighten this up. Then all I need to do is rinse my brush, kind of wipe it off my paper towel a little bit so it's just damp, and then you can lift up the color using water. So you kind of lift up, dab it on your paper towel, and lift that color up. So you can absolutely lighten a color in watercolor. And look, now it's almost as light as my first one. Great. It's kind of show-offy. <laughs>
It's what I do, okay? I show you things. <laughs> it's my job. <laughs> okay, and then for your last leaf, I want it to be darker value. So I want you to have more paint on your brush. So you're going to have more paint than water here, and that is just going to be darker. Like that. I'm trying to make my medium leaf again. <laughs> there we go. Any questions from the crew before we start? Any questions so far? Jody's wondering when she can get the new paint. Jody, we're working on that right now. Yeah, labels are coming. We're labels. Like end of the week. Yeah, probably later in the week. We just had to get uh, labels for the larger bottles so you know what colors are what. <laughs> and then those will be available on our website. Um, and you can get those full bottles of these paints, which is pretty fantastic. Pretty excited. Okay. And then we're just going to practice. Um, Those 120 people are watching today. Wow. You better not screw up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that went in such a different direction. Oh, so, <laughs> so many people are watching. Don't mess it up. <laughs> Okay, we're fine. We're fine. I'm fine. I'm a professional. It's fine. Okay, we're going to practice circles. 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 So grab any color. You can grab the pink, you can grab yellow, whatever color you want. And I just want you to practice making um, different size circles on the paper anywhere. Just go for it. And um, you're going to see that my circles are going to become a little wonky. That's okay, because guess what? It is super hard to draw a perfect circle. So some of them might be like, that's great. Yay. Some of them might be more oval shaped. Some of them might have a weird curve. That's fine. We're embracing the wonkiness of our circles today, but I just want you to practice them. And you see that sometimes I don't do it in like one stroke. Sometimes I do it in two. That's okay too. Um, and if you do something like this, right, I did my bottom half and then I went to go do my first half and it became a little too thick on this side, then I'm just going to go around and thicken that side up. Smart. Because with our citrus, it's okay if one side is thicker than others. It's okay if your outside edge is pretty thick because um, this is sliced citrus and it's more of an illustration, so it's more just fun. It's just funsies that we're doing here. <laughs> And then we're just going to practice one little wedge before we get started. So when you do your wedge, you want to start um, in the middle. And then you're just going to make a triangle going to the outside. And leave a very thin white line in between the wedge and the rind. Mm. Yeah, right? I mean, yes. <laughs> yeah. And then when you fill it in, you're going to start to fill it in. But I want you to leave little white spaces here and there because uh, citrus and fruit is wet, so it glistens. So these little white spaces are glares from the light on it because it's moist. 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 Is that, I know that's, I know some people don't like that word. Maybe I shouldn't use it. <laughs> 120. <laughs> we just lost half the people watching because I said moist. It's fine. Okay, great. Let's get that paper up about three inches. Good? Yep. Okay, great. Cool. Okay, Let's Let's we're rock. ready. You are welcome to keep your scratch paper on hand if you want to test colors or something before we get started. Um, we are going to do four steps today. I don't have my board over here where I wrote down the steps. If I can remember right, we did our large citrus first, our medium citrus in step two, small citrus in step three, and leaves in step four. I believe those were the four steps. Yes? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to start with our large citrus first, and we're going to start with our orange. So it's going to go in the top right, on the right hand side. I don't like to start right in the middle because it's hard compositionally to start things right in the middle and then make it help it feel balanced. How, how big do you want to go? I feel like people struggle with, with getting 
dangerous with the big ones. Okay, don't be afraid to go big. You can go real. I feel like this is a good, I don't know, three or four inches. Ooh, Would you wow. say that's big? Wow. Okay, wait, my What's hand. Okay, wait, my hand. <laughs> I would say three inches. Let's go three inches around. My hand is six, so I'm like, what's half of my hand? That is a juicy orange. It's a big old juicy orange. Delicious. Okay, and I'm going to mix orange using yellow. Wait, how do you say orange? What? You say orange? Orange? <laughs> am I saying it weird? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Ali, I'm not saying it weird, am I? No. Okay, so I'm mixing orange. Was that right? Say orange. Orange <laughs> with uh, my yellow and the magenta. That's how I'm mixing orange. Um, you can also mix orange. The standard is red and yellow, but we're using uh, magenta. Okay, we're going for it. Don't be scared, you guys. This is just making marks on a paper with paint. It's not a big deal. You got it. So I'm gonna grab my orange. I'm gonna start by doing my big circle first. Go on the top right hand side and just go for it. Make your circle. Just do it. Here we go. We're going around. Make it nice and big. There we go. Mine's kind of egg shaped. That's cool. <laughs> That's kind of light. I'm just going to thicken mine up a bit. And then while it's wet, you can drop in like yellow and that's going to give it, see I dropped in some yellow there Ooh. and that gave it some nice bright color. So you can drop in some color here. I love that. Yeah. Creates a nice little, I mean, if you want to live super wild, you can even drop in some orange, but yeah, dropping in a little hint of another color is going to really help it snap, pop out. Great. Okay, now we have our orange. That is an excellent circle. Thank you. Good job. <laughs> okay, I'm actually gonna thicken this side of my citrus a little bit more. So the, the rind of your citrus can be as thick or as thin as you want. It's up to you, it's your painting. It's your world that you're making. Okay, so I have my circle. You can see it's a little wonky, but that's okay. Remember, this is just fun. And honestly, I think how like kind of odd your your shapes are, the more interesting they are, right? It just gives them character. So uh, we're gonna start with our little wedges. So I'm gonna start in the middle. I'm gonna make my little, go right in the middle, and then I'm gonna make my triangle. And then I'm gonna leave a thin space in between the rind and the little wedge. And then I fill it in. And I like to fill it in um, kind of just doing these marks like this. Like, um, willy nilly. Willy, willy nilly? Is that, the, <laughs> is, that, is that the word I'm looking That's for? That's my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> but just remember to leave some white um, areas. What I like about this is that it reminds me of a pizza. <laughs> <laughs> That's always good news. I feel like I could make a pizza now. <laughs> yes. By the way, painting on orange, same as painting a pizza. Exactly. You guys are great. Okay. And then we're gonna move on to our second orange. The second orange, I mean wedge, the second slice of the wedge is the same as the first, but you are gonna leave a little bit of a white space in between the uh, wedges. Now, as you can see, my wedges are not perfectly all the same size. That is also okay. And fill it in. Leaving some white spaces, and you can even drop in water if you want a little bit of um, different texture. I'm gonna drop in just some water drops on this one. And just keep making your way around. Do your little pizza wedge. Now, when you go to do your white marks for your, your glistens. I'm trying to get more orange here. <laughs> no, it's okay. You're good. There you go. Um, try and make it, I mean, this is something I struggle with too, but try and get your white spots in different parts. On, you don't want all of the white spots to, white spots to be on the very edge of the wedge. <laughs> you wanna like mix it up a little bit. 
because that's a little bit more true to how you would see light reflecting off of the um, orange. Do you have a certain number of wedges that you do? Is it just half of <laughs> I don't have a certain number. It's, uh, it's just however many fit. I can probably fit two more in here. So I kind of just wing it every time. So Sally says, oh no, geometry again. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, <laughs> We're not doing shapes, okay? We're not doing it. Okay, I'm gonna try and leave some white space in the middle on this next one. I love the way that looks, that's so fun. It looks so great. Okay, I have room for one more wedge. And remember, you can always go back. Like, I'm looking at these two, two wedges right here, and I'm like, man, that white line between them is pretty thick. So if that happens, just move your line over. It's not a big deal. And if they touch a little bit too, um, and they bleed together, that's okay too. Things are going to happen. That's life. That's life. That's life. <laughs> Okay, and I'm going to do my last wedge here. It's an awful big wedge. It is, but that's okay. And um, you might notice that sometimes I use the side of my brush to do the curved top. That's why that line is so thick. So when you use the side of a round, you're going to get a thicker line. When you use just the top of the round, it's going to be a more narrow line. There's not like a right or wrong way to do it. You're welcome to do um, a thin line all the way around or whatever. Whatever works for you. This is your painting. You guys, we did our orange. Almost. <laughs> it looks great. Yay. Yeah. Circles that look like trapezoids. <laughs> Circles that look like trapezoids, parallelograms, rhombuses. Is that the right word? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Barbara has feathery edges. Too much water? Uh, if you have feathery edges, that may be too much water. Um, or too much paint. Or, 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 too or too little water, maybe. But if I start to get feathery edges, I'll pay attention to what I'm doing and see if I can give you a tip on how to, how to fix that. That's what the scratch paper is for too. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to move to our grapefruit, which is also a big guy. And that's gonna be bottom left right here. And for the grapefruit, you can just take that orange that you already have and mix in a little bit more pink. And look at that, it's like a grapefruit color. It's beautiful, it's great. <laughs> um, same thing, we're gonna go in, we're gonna do our outside circle, and then we're gonna fill it in. So I'm gonna do bottom left this time. I'm just gonna make that circle. Oh. <laughs> that looks like a face. <laughs> <laughs> it does kinda look like a face. <laughs> Mine got a little bit bigger, but I'm into that. I'm into big circles. Okay. I'm thicken, thickening my edge up a little bit here. Remember, it's really hard to do a perfect circle and to do a perfect thickness all the way around. That's not our goal here. That's not what we're trying to do. So be kind to yourself as you're painting this. And with the... Um, Grapefruit one, we can do touches of orange in there. It doesn't have to be the same, the same pink color. You can introduce a little bit more orange here and there, and that's going to give you color variation. So that's going to kind of change it up. All right, let's start on our wedges. So, and sometimes what I like to do with my wedges is I'll do a wedge. Let me add a little bit more pink in there. Or magenta. <laughs> Uh, I do my little pizza wedge, and I do this one like in a darker value, so this one has a little bit more paint, 
Don't forget to add other colors in there because that's going to give you some variation. And then I just kind of once rinse my brush and I move on to the next like wedge. And then um, just having these two next to each other where one is a little bit lighter than the other one um, adds interest to your painting visually. So play with, like in our warm-up where we were playing with different values, play with different values within the wedges of your fruit. Mickey Pass says she just watercolored her first thing ever, and it actually looks like an orange. Good yeah. job, Mickey! Yeah. That's great. So, and when you lighten up that, um, like, grapefruit, you get this really pretty, like, soft pink um, color. You can add a little bit of orange in there for variation. It's always a good idea to do little drops of different colors in there because it just makes it fun. And you just keep going around. Leave, I'll try and leave some white spaces in the center. So I'm kind of filling in my uh, wedges with dashes, but I don't want my dashes to be so far apart that it's mostly white. I still want color to be the primary thing going on within the wedge and just hints and little pieces that are white. And then I'm just going to drop in some heavy color within this one and just kind of let that move. And we're gonna keep on keeping on. Okay. How's everyone doing out there? It's pretty intense in there. It's a grapefruit. Oh no! Okay, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm gonna just drop in some orange in here. Just a touch. But you see how adding a different color in there, it just makes it, um, it just adds something to it. Because sometimes I think that we have like our mixed color and we're like, I'm just going to stay in there. Have fun with it. Just, you know, play around with it. And I think it's when you do those like subtle color changes and color drops in there, um, that's when your paintings will really pop. This edge wedge got thick. That's all right. I like thick, thick wedges. Can't. What am I saying? <laughs> you can always, I'm just gonna drop in some color while it's still wet and just let that move. I like a sassy wedge. <laughs> I like a sassy thick wedge. <laughs> okay, so I got my two big Citrus down, we, we finished step one. We did it, you guys, good job. Now we're gonna move on to um, step two, which is our medium-sized citrus, which is our lemons, and we have one other orange. Jen says she's worried uh, that she has too much color variation, but then she realized she likes to live on the edge. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you just yeah. made my day by saying you live on the edge, yes. <laughs> I, as I always say, I like to live on the edge. So <laughs> I'm gonna throw some color in there. Do you have a t-shirt that says that? Jen, no, but you I will. say it in every single tutorial it that I do. <laughs> <laughs> every recorded tutorial, you you're gonna hear me say, well, I like to live on the edge. So I throw a little color in there. <laughs> okay, that just totally made my day. Okay, um, I'm gonna grab some yellow to make my lemon. And um, I'm gonna go underneath this orange, a little bit to the left-hand side. Size. These are medium, we're on step two, we're on the medium fruit. So just try and make them smaller. Um, <laughs> but not like, spoiler alert. spoiler alert, they're gonna be smaller. Maybe do this ones like <laughs> an inch and a half to two inches. Medium is just smaller. Medium is smaller than large. Okay, go, let's do it. Okay. Okay, yes, yes. I'm gonna just thicken my edge a little bit in some places. Yeah, round it out. Yeah, that looks great, okay. 
And now we're gonna put in our wedges, same thing. Now with the yellow, you can drop, do little drops of orange here and there for color variation. But with yellow, what's really gonna help is you actually do value variation. So you're gonna let some of those wedges be nice and light. And you might think like, man, this is so light that it's not, uh, that it's too light that you like won't be able to tell. People will be able to see it. Um, it's just sometimes we get so into looking at it that we um, think, especially with watercolor, we're like, that's too light because we're used to wanting to have a thick amount of paint on a paper. But with watercolor, those subtle changes, those soft washes, they add a lot to a painting. So don't be afraid to go light and don't be afraid to go dark. <laughs> all of the things just don't be afraid <laughs> I'm covering all my bases here <laughs> and just keep going round round and round okay and I'm going to drop in a little bit of orange now I don't want to go too strong with my orange because we still want to be clear that it's a lemon so it's just like a soft hint of orange and maybe you don't like orange in your lemon don't add it to your painting it's your life again, covering all our bases. again <laughs> making sure I'm pleasing everybody <laughs> okay this one is just gonna be a nice this one only ended up with four wedges I'm not mad about it <laughs> no okay Oh, look at that lemon. It's cute. So cute. This one kind of caught this other wedge and blended together. Again, it's a happy accident. <laughs> I'm not mad about it. I think a lot of watercolor, the more you paint, the more you're okay with like letting things go and realizing that mistakes aren't really mistakes. Because I think sometimes when you're starting something new, you think, oh my gosh, I messed this up. Now it's totally ruined and I'm just going to throw this away. And you kind of stress out. If anything, I've learned the more I painted that when I mess something up, I'm like, whatever. First of all, nobody even notices. So it's not a big deal. Okay. They're calling for a t-shirt that says, moist, thick wedges. Moist, thick wedges. Oh, no. Yes. <laughs> Next time you see me, that's all I'm just going to have oh. on my shirt. And we're just going to let people wonder what's going on. Okay, I'm going to do my second um, lemon. And I'm going to go uh, bottom right, right in here. I'm going to have this one. This one's going to be kind of in between these two sizes if I can. I'm just going to go for it. And I succeeded. I made a circle. It's great. Yeah, that's a really good circle. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, drop in a little bit of color, even yellow. You can have some um, like uh, darker yellow in some areas. And then we're gonna start on our wedges. Okay, go across. I'm doing little dashes. Drop in some yellow for variation and just keep going. Keep, keep on keeping on. So many t-shirt ideas. <laughs> and remember to play with that water and get some light values in there. Now, whenever I'm doing a painting like this, whether it's flowers or a fruit where there's like a lot of different sizes and I'm filling up a page. Compositionally, it's easier for me to start um, with the larger items first and then work my way to smaller. And that's why we did these, did these steps in large citrus, medium citrus, and then small. And then you kind of fill in those white spaces using the leaves. So we're essentially using the leaves as a tool to kind of pull it all together what you mean when you say like compositionally? Yeah, compositionally is just the um, things that you're painting on the paper and how they sit on the paper. So sometimes if you're looking at a painting um, that you're doing 
Like sometimes it might feel really heavy on one side or sometimes it might feel really blank in some areas. Those are all compositional um, things. So it's just basically whatever you're painting, how it sits on the paper. So kind of like the big picture. Yes. Allie, excellent question. Because I did notice on some that were posting um, their citrus is there were a lot, a lot of white spaces in between their leaves and their citrus. So um, the reason with, for the leaves is we want to fill that up and make it look nice and full. So when you go and we, you know, start filling things in, you can be a little bit crazy with, um, with your leaves and because we just don't want it to look too bare. Okay. I'm always Great. one much behind. <laughs> Let's see if we, I'm going to get a little bit more yellow on here to make. We have one more orange to make, and then we're going to move on to step three. If you have these bottles, you have to push down on them to make them open. They are childproof. Just a little tip. Sometimes everyone. <laughs> little tip, yeah. Sometimes it takes me a second to get them. Okay. Now I'm going for my medium size orange. It's going to go right around here. Okay. So if, if you're having a really hard time on placement, sometimes it's always handy to kind of like just take your finger and just kind of draw where it's going to go. And like that will almost give you like an idea of where to draw it. So it kind of gives you like a little pre little, I'm going to do that there. Also it makes you look like a weirdo. Okay, Al, this is a judgment-free zone. <laughs> we look, don't worry about what you look like, okay? Your painting's gonna turn out great. That's what matters. <laughs> look at this person painting, so weird. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my edges got a little bit thick here, so I'm gonna thicken out my top. But like I said, I like a thick wedge. And I live on the edge. I live on the wedge. <laughs> oh, and then I'm going to drop in some color for variation. Okay, and I'm going to start. Lynn says they're old woman proof. Old woman proof. <laughs> you got this. Now, um, if this is your first time using liquid watercolor, it might be your first time because they're not like um, crazy out there. I love using liquid watercolor because I think they're easier to blend. I think they go on the paper smoother um, and the color is brighter. But there's a couple things to know about liquid watercolor. Um, they, um, so they're made, um, they're dye based and not pigment based, which is how they have such bright colors. But because they are dye based, they are not light fast. So that- Will you remind Janet what colors you're using right now? Too? Oh yeah. Uh, I am using uh, Tahoe Blue, Magenta, and Dandelion Yellow. Those are my colors. So this is what I use in my personal work. And since I'm an illustrator, like what matters to me is just that pop of color because I paint mostly for me and then I make prints of my work. So um, I just really like the workability and I like the colors. That's what, that's what works for me. And honestly, I didn't love watercoloring so much until I started using liquid watercolors and the colors were so bright and vibrant that it made me just want to keep painting everything. And that's really how I started to, um, like illustrate, that's really what led me there, was just using paints that were so bright that they got me excited. Okay, there's my orange. Ooh, that center got way off center. That's okay, you guys. <laughs> it's okay. Okay, when you're finished with that orange, we finished with step two. We finished with our medium citrus. So good job. Right. Now, good, work team. good yeah, good work team. <laughs> now we're gonna start with step three, which is just our small citrus. So we have limes, and for fun, I made a tiny grapefruit. Do they really exist? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But actually, my husband had a pink lemon tree, and they were pink on the inside. They were very soft pink, oh. but it was a thing. So maybe this is just a small pink lemon. Let's do that. 
So we're moving on to step three. I'm mixing a little bit more magenta in with my orange to get that nice um, peachy pink color. And this small is small, so try and go um, smaller than your medium. And I'm gonna go in between these two oranges kind of on the top part. So I am noticing this now. I generally have the problem that I don't have enough pigment in my brush, or, or color in my brush when I paint, so my mm -hmm. colors always come out really light. Mm -hmm. What can I do? <laughs> so just when you're painting, just pick up more paint in your brush. Wait, should we check in quick? Yeah, let's check in. That's a great oh, idea. Oh, oh, cool. Ow! It's like you should do this for a job or something. It's okay. Nights and weekends. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm just going to move alleys to the center so we can take a look. Okay, so her citrus is looking great. I'm loving the different water colors here. We're getting some nice bursts of yellow throughout. I see some pink in there, which is really gorgeous. Um, your lemons look great. If anything, I would say maybe take, um, like you could even take your round two and maybe like smooth out some of these lines. So just the curve is just a little mm -hmm. bit straighter. Cause I know it's hard when you're doing like a line that sometimes you get like a shaky outline that's totally normal. Um, so sometimes what I like to do is I'll just kind of go over it one more time and smooth out that circle. So then it's... Um, the old paint shakes. The old paint shakes. Paint shakes. Yeah, it happens. So just kind of smooth those out. And that way you get like a nice stronger line as you go. There. Yeah, so we're just kind of smoothing that out. But besides that, I think that looks great. Don't be afraid to drop in just some bright pigment here and there, or I guess color, I should say. There. Yeah, that looks great. Good job. Hooray. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, so if you're having trouble with um, your colors being too light, um, just pick up, just have more actual paint on your brush. So that means like, like with that um, grapefruit that we're doing, do another swoop of that pink, do another swoop of that orange, and look at all this paint that I'm filling up my brush mm -hmm. with. Right. So then that should um, go on. Now, if you need to switch to your two to do these tiny little wedges, please feel free to. I'm only using my six because I just picked up all this paint. So I'm gonna, I I'm gonna to. use that up, and then I'll switch over to my two. Oh no! And remember, you don't have to pick up paint between each wedge. You can, you can just keep on going, and let it just get lighter. Your wedges get a little bit lighter as you go. And if you, it's, if it's easier for you to move your paper, because the more items we add, the more likely it is you are going to put your wrist in your painting. If that, if that happens, that's okay. I do it all the time. So that's why I kind of rotate my paper to try and avoid that if I think an area is too wet. Oh, look at that cute little, look at that cute little fruit. Okay, I'm gonna switch over to my two because it's a little bit easier. And then for my limes, I'm just mixing yellow with green and I'm gonna have a little bit more yellow than the green um, just to get um, oh, that limey color because they're not like a dark green, they're a, they're a light green. If you liquid watercolors stay wet longer than tan watercolors or like clay ones or something? Like when you're putting it on your paper? Yeah, I'm trying to think. Um, I think that they do. It's hard because it's been a long time since I've used pan watercolors. Um, but I, I, I think it also depends. Maybe. I, it's hard because there's many variables in that. It depends on what paper you're using. It depends on um, how much water you had. Um, on your brush when putting it. So if you have mainly paint on your brush when you're painting, it will dry faster than if you are using like a lot of water 
on your brush, and then it depends on the type of paper. So I can't answer those questions, but with the liquid watercolor, we'll yeah. And just so you know, with the liquid watercolor, it can dry on your palette and you can bring it back using water. So um, don't feel like you have to rinse this when it's done. You can keep on using the colors and just reactivate them with water. Okay, so I'm continuing on with my lime. Doing another one over here, like in between these two. And I, I switched to my round two. There we go. And then start on your wedges. If you can, try and make the center of your wedges that center point pointy. And to get nice thin lines, you just do soft pressure with your brush. Oh, this one's just gonna have four also. And remember with the lime, you can totally just do drops of yellow in there. You can do even a little bit drops of maybe more of a bluish green. You go so fast. <laughs> well, mine is so tiny compared to yours. It's a baby. <laughs> okay, I got two more lines to go. I'm going to do another one over here and then another one over here. Now remember, since we're freehanding this and we don't have an outline, our placement on all of our paintings is going to be slightly different from each other. So um, you can totally um, put your limes wherever they fit. Maybe if like you thought that's too close to the bottom, you can do another one over here. Um, it's totally up to you. Don't be afraid to kind of go off on your own, if you feel ready. If not, that's okay. Just follow along with me. You'll be great. You can do it. <laughs> okay. Got my little lime. Then you're just gonna fill, fill in with these little wedges, little babies. I'm going to use some of that dark green, maybe, just to see. I'm just going to see what it does. Just want to see. If you like it, you can do it. If you don't like it, don't do it on yours. I'll do it for you, though, so you can see if you like that. That's kind of cool. A little orange in it kind of looks cool, too. Totally. If you, if you take a little bit of, like, the... The orange over there? Yeah. I'm doing it. I'm going to do it. Yeah, totally. Now, when you mix colors, you just kind of want to be a little bit careful. Like, I wouldn't want to throw in the magenta into this mix because um, green and red are complementary colors, uh, which means if you mix them together a lot, you get Christmas. <laughs> you, you, you get uh, you get brown. Um, so you can always use the complement of a color to tone down a color a little bit. But if I were to start mixing the green with this magenta, it would turn into kind of a muddy color. So, and we have color wheels on our website. Color wheels um, will kind of tell you what colors are primary colors and complementary colors, and it will give you an idea on mixing. So we do have those on our website, letsmakeart.com, if you just wanted to order. I don't think they're very expensive, but you'll have just a visual chart next to you on um, what colors you can mix and all that stuff. So it comes in handy. Okay, so Nepal is wondering, uh, she says, when hers is drying, they're looking faded. They're not as, as bright as she wants. So like, maybe an example would be that bottom left one. If you wanted your grapefruit to be brighter, mm -hmm. what would you do? 
Well, whenever, when it dries, it is going to fade a little bit in color um, just because when it's wet, it's, it's bright. It's the same thing, same idea. Like if you ever painted acrylic, it kind of does the same thing. So, um, but I have noticed that like the lighter washes tend to um, not be as bright when they're dry. So if you want, what you can do is just when you, like if, if this part is fading, you can see where I did those drops of color. They stayed brighter than when than these over here. So just while you're painting them, just add a little bit more paint in some of those areas and it will um, kind of keep a little bit more of that brightness when it dries. Takes a little bit to get them used to. Yeah. Okay. One more. You ready? Ready. Ready. I'm going to do one kind of down here. Now I'm getting close to the bottom of my page here, so I don't want to go too close. I kind of want to still keep a little bit of a white space on the bottom. So I'm kind of actually going to move this line up in between here a little bit more. Now at the top, I have a thicker space there. And what I always do is um, you can cut off parts of your paper. So sometimes I'll ignore like the top inch or something and just take um, like a pair of scissors and just kind of trim that off. Sorry, I'm focusing because I'm working on <laughs> small areas. I feel like when we work smaller, we tend to like kind of hold our breath and hope for the best. Hope for the <laughs> Just go for it. Yeah, it's much harder to work smaller than it is to work. do a little drop of strong color in there. You slide that back up. Yeah. Is that good? Okay. You guys, we finished step three. We finished with our citrus. So now all we have to do are leaves. So I'm going to switch back to my round six to do the leaves. And um, you can get some different greens going on your palette. So you can have a section that's like really nice light greens with more of a lime color. Um, you can have, I'm gonna move some over here where they're kind of more of a blue green. Oh, that's some pretty color. That is pretty. Yeah, I like that. And then I'm just gonna start kind of putting in my leaves. So um, just that same practice that we were doing at the beginning with our leaf shape is I'm gonna kind of start on the left-hand side and just work my way down. Now remember the point of the leaves is basically just to fill in all of the white gaps around your citrus. So um, make, and then make some of them big, you know, play with shape size of your leaves, but we basically just wanna help it feel nice and full. So I'm just gonna start putting in my leaves. Now on some of my leaves, I do leave a little bit of a like thin line. I think that's cool because it kind of works like a, like the vein on a leaf. Hmm. Or you can totally fill yours in, like completely. And you can start wherever you want. You can start, I, I tend to start on the left hand side and then just like work my way, but you can start wherever you want. And then also you'll see here that the angle of my leaves change direction. So this one is angled this way and this one is angled this way. I'm gonna do another one that's angled this way. So don't feel like all of your leaves have to be the same angle. Kind of mix those up and play with them. So I've got a lot, a lot of white space kind of in between my slices. Yeah, and you can I'm, do leaves in between. Just wherever? They can just point wherever? They can point wherever, yeah. You can see here on um, that I have leaves going this way, this way, this way. So they kind of are like going all different directions. All right. So they don't all have to go to the right or to the left. Well, I guess those are the only two <laughs> options. <laughs> <laughs> but you guys, you guys all know what I'm saying. You get it. You get me. Okay. 
and just start. And remember to play with value. Have, let some of your leaves be a little bit lighter and softer in color. Because when you, when you do that, then it makes the ones that are darker pop out more. I like this color right here, this like soft blue mm. green right there. It's gorgeous, I love it. I'm gonna do a couple water drops in there for texture, because it's interesting. So I just do kind of like an eyeball shape, make sure the tops and the bottoms are pointy, and then just- Some green lips. Some green lips. I guess without like a little bump curve though for that top lip. Doing some more blue leaves on here. I like it. If you really want it to be rainbowy, then you can mix a little bit of the magenta with the blue. That's gonna give you a great purple. And you can put some purple leaves in there too. It's fun. Color is fun. We okay? I just left it on the wrong screen. Oh. <laughs> So I'm kind of adjusting my leaves to fit depending on how much white space I have. So if I have a larger um, space, I go nice and big with my leaf. Seems like a lot of plum leaves in there. <laughs> plum leaves are purple. Should I do some purple leaves or is that just too much? Seems a little edgy. Oh, I like to live on the edge. So that's, <laughs> Let me there's tell my you. answer. There's my answer. That's a fun idea though, to change up the fruits. Like you don't even necessarily have to do, like once you get good at the citrus, you know? Yeah. Ooh, look Which at, look at that purple. That's great. That's Remember, so you don't have to follow. This is your painting. If you don't like purple leaves, don't put them in there. This is your world. Oh, I like that purple next to that grapefruit, though. That's pretty. I can't stand it. <laughs> well, Al, this is my painting. <laughs> uh, let's do one over here. And now I need a purple up here. Yes. <laughs> yes, I love it. Yes. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Now I'm going back to green. I'm calming down. Whew, that was fun. Now to get back. To get back to my green. <laughs> okay, that's what happened. What happened? This this leaf, it was like blue. That is so, so cool. Yellow, and I was like, you know, just like, let oh it my go. gosh, let's move that so they can see that. Can they, can you see that, Al? Which one am I looking at? This one. Yes. So she did a blue leaf first and then she picked up some yellow and dropped it in. And look so at yellow. that. I picked up so much yellow on accident. That is so cool though. That, happy my friend, accidents. is a happy Good accident. Yeah. Good job. That's super cool. I'm going to do that on purpose. All right. I'm going to put a blue leaf in. Some yellow. Oh, yeah. Mm. That's great. Now my uh, leaves have like a gemmy look because I added that purple. I like it, though. It's, it's so cool. We love color here. And then I saw a, some, some people did that already posted this that I thought was really beautiful is on some leaves that after they were dried, they just did like a little line through them, like a, like a leaf vein um, and did just a little bit of detailing on some, which I actually thought was really gorgeous. So um, feel free to do that. Um, I wish I could remember who posted that because I 
Loved how that turned they out. Were cool. What? They were pretty cool. They were so cool. cool. Doing their own. So I'm dropping in some strong blue to this green. Now this leaf, I did have to make it a little curved to fit that space. That's okay. And then now is the time where you're kind of looking for white spaces that are kind of distracting. So for me, this space right here is kind of distracting. Um, this space up here and then down here a little bit is a little bit distracting. So sometimes it's super helpful to take a break while you're painting and like walk away from your painting or maybe set your painting up if it's dry enough and walk away and look at it. And then those areas compositionally that seem bare or um, kind of off, then you can kind of see a little bit better. Sometimes we're so like over our painting and too close to it that we can't like step aside and see that. So it's always a good idea to like just walk away for a second walk away take a look at it come back to it a little in a little bit and see okay what areas can i work on what can i do and what i like to do also if like i want to add more leaves but i don't want it to get too busy is that's when i start to use lighter value leaves because something is there but it's not as strong as a darker value leaf And I'm going to do another leaf kind of over here. Okay. I think I might be, oh, I'm going to do another little one over here. I'm using a light value going right in here. So this, there's a lot of water on my brush and just a little bit of paint. That's pretty cool. I like those purple leaves a lot. I think they were pretty cool. Okay. How do you feel? I feel really good. Allie, how do you feel? Pretty, pretty good. I love all the different greens on your leaves. They look great. I'm just sharpening some of my leaves right now because sometimes I do leaves so fast that I'm like, not paying attention to their shape sometimes so you can always go back at the end and kind of sharpen up some ends or make some little adjustments to them change their shape great people are loving it record number of people watching yay that is so exciting thanks for sharing everybody sharing it yeah you guys are sharing it you guys are so awesome first of all for those of you who are trying this and I've never used watercolor before, you guys are awesome and super brave. It's so scary trying something new, especially when you're an adult. Um, and so I just want to give you a little, you know, clap or, you know, what we should can, I say? We should do applause. Okay. Ready? Yeah. <laughs> Allie, you're so excited about that. That was great. So good job. Um, can we hold our, I think mine's dry enough that I can hold it up. You want to do a slow pan, Al? I want Can we do it right here? Yep. Is that how we're going to do it? Okay. Exactly okay, you go ahead. You put it up to mine. Like that? Yeah. All right, here we go. Here we go. They look so good. Am I, is my face, is my face in it? I'm just kidding. Sorry. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> so um, please share it. Um, post this. We have, if you're watching on Facebook, you can just post it in the comments. If you're part of our Facebook uh, group, Let's Make Art Together, you can share it there. Um, we have a very supportive creative community that you guys are building and I love it. So um, share your work. And I know it's scary, but you guys can do hard and brave things. You're doing it right now. Um, so if you put it on Instagram, tag us in it. Our Instagram name is Let's Go Make Art. You guys want to see what we're doing next week? Yes. <laughs> okay. We are doing, ah, 
the Luna Moth. It's so beautiful. So, pretty. so beautiful and bright, colorful. We're gonna be using the same colors as we did today, so you don't even have to clean your pan. Just leave Remember it. We filmed that tutorial. Okay, we filmed that tutorial, and my mic <laughs> stopped working for two minutes in the middle of it. So for two minutes we lost audio. And then she tried to voice. I over. tried to voice over. <laughs> that does not work because oh, no. I'm like, wait, what color? Uh, it looks like I'm grabbing some green, and I'm like, okay, that's not gonna work. <laughs> so, so we kind of uh, we we figured it out. It's it's you'll see it. It's it's great. <laughs> we got it. We got it together. So, anyways, that tutorial will be released tomorrow. And um, you guys can practice your Luna Moth till we meet next Tuesday at the same time to paint it together. Come with questions. Um, we love it all. So I think Bye. that's it. Bye, you guys.